Hey, shalom, shalom. Bawa kuar tuwab, which is good morning. Anak na wahai, barisha Allah wa lakim latam. Kasha buwai bahar khawa kaksha ya hawa bahasham ya hawa ma'amath. Which is truly, hey, with the Hebrew is like, coming to you week in, week out through the spirit and power of ya hawa bahasham. Ya hawa to preach to you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. West Indian stations is like, foreigners na khamatam. Kaya ha malakwa thashamayam kwa repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. All praise to the Most High Yahweh, which means He exists. Bahasham in the name Yahweh Shai delivers. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Israel, the elders and apostles of the Great Millstone. And mercy, peace, and blessings to the elect of the nation of Israel. Shalom, which means peace. This is an article that reads, NATO state to place 10,000 troops on Russian allies' borders minister. It says, Poland is moving its forces to scare Belarus. Defense chief uh, Marius Blaschak has said, you know, and uh, Poland is uh, allies with the U.S. All right, and Belarus is uh, allies with Russia. All right, it says, Poland is set to deploy thousands of additional troops to its borders with Belarus amid heightened tensions in the region. Defense Minister uh, Marius uh, Bl Blaschek said on on Thursday. All right, let's get a precept. This is Matthew chapter 24 and verse verse uh, verse six. It says, "And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars." See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. All right, which we're we're still we we'll, we'll still it's a lot we're still seeing. Uh, you know the wars and the rumors of wars. All right, Belarus, Poland, Taiwan, China, Russia, U.S. Let me get this word for uh, rumors. It says it's a lot. It says it says hearsay report or rumor. You know we're we're hearing those things, and I want to go into this word wars as well. It says a war, a fight, a battle, dispute, strife, quarrel. It says a single encounter or a series. You know, that's what we're seeing, you know. Because pretty much they're on um, they're on the border of Belarus. All right, now going back, let's go get the article. It says, speaking to the national public broadcaster, Polsky Radio, Blashak stated that we're moving the army closest to the border of Be with Belarus in order to scare the aggressor so that he does not dare to attack us. The minister added that security in the region would be underpinned by 10,000 soldiers with 4,000 assigned to directly support the border guard and another 6,000 held in reserve. You know, which these are just numbers, you know, they're just throwing out numbers because pretty much what they're doing is a show of force. You know, they're like, all right, boom, we're here. You know, but what happens when, you know, the, you know, the opposing side no longer respects um your bluff you know because pretty much it's a bluff it's just it's just you know just for show which i mean you know they, they might be willing to use but you know right now um they uh you know everybody's trying to keep the peace so to speak but they're just showing force you know but nevertheless we are in that time of uh of war so eventually you know it's going to turn into uh actual wars all right it says the official's remarks come shortly after the Polish Defense Ministry approved a request by by border officials to send an additional thousand uh, soldiers to the area. Later, the Polish authorities changed their mind, deciding to increase the number to 2,000. Blaszczak also lashed out at Minsk, repeating accusations that two Belarusian helicopters violated Polish airspace last week, calling the alleged incident another provocation in Minsk has denied the accusation saying it had provided warsaw with detailed data on the matter everything that is happening in belarus is coordinated with the actions of russia blashak stated without providing any evidence in recent weeks polish officials have also sounded the alarm over alleged attempts by migrants uh yeah migrants to illegally cross the belarusian border as well as alleged uh, efforts by operatives working for the Russian defense contractor Wagner Group to infiltrate the country. Country it says numerous Wagner fighters 
moved to Belarus after a short-lived mutiny attempt in Russia, with some of them now involved in the training of Minsk troops. Blashak comments also come after the Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shogu announced on Wednesday that Moscow will bolster its troops on its western borders amid a standoff over the Ukraine conflict. In his speech, he described Poland as a key instrument of anti-Russia policies of the U.S. He also claimed that Warsaw is actively trying to build up the most powerful army in Europe, which, according to Polish officials, now numbers around 170,000 service members. All right. So, again, just to reiterate, you know, just doing a show, a show of force, you know, which right now the intention isn't necessarily to, you know, actually um, fight because if they was going to fight, you know, they would, you know, they're just showing force, you know. But like I said, eventually it's going to escalate. All right. So let's get some precepts. Because it just said Belarus and Poland, you see, but who are their allies? Poland is allies with the U.S. You know, that's why, that's why they have uh, numbers of uh, U.S. troops in Poland. All right. And then in Belarus is like right on the border of Russia. You see, so they're, they're allies with Russia. All right. So we're seeing um, um, the world superpowers uh, go up against each other, so to speak. You know, even though it's not directly the superpowers. All right. It's you got Russia and then you got the U.S. supporting both of these both of these two. So if it does escalate. You know, they will be going up against each other, you see. And even with the Ukraine, like, the U.S. is trying to back out of this, you see, but there's no way around it, you know, because Russia also supports Ukraine, all right, and then Russia also supports Belarus, you see. So eventually, you know, uh, Milsus is going to be shot off. So let's let's get some precepts. This is Second Isaiah, also Ezra, chapter 16 and verse 11. It says, The Lord shall threaten who should not be utterly beaten to powder at his presence. The earth quaketh, and the foundations thereof, the sea arises up with waves from the deep, and the waves of it are troubled, and the fishes thereof also before the Lord and before the glory of his power. For strong is the right hand that bendeth the bow, his arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss. You see, the arrow is not going to miss, all right, because it says each, uh, pretty much in Joel, you know, Yahweh Allah, each missile is going to hit its intended target. It says when they begin to be shot in the ends of the world. All right, Amer on America, Babylon, the Great, and, and various different other places, you see, but chiefly America, Babylon, the Great. It says, Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. You know, like it goes into in Isaiah chapter 55, it talks about <clears throat> talks about how the the uh, the word of the Lord, all right, shouldn't return void. You see, so it's prophesied that the, the missiles are going to hit um, specific spots on the, on, the, on the planet Earth. You see, so that's actually going to happen. They're not going to return back. Or, so like, um, well, yeah, going going into the missiles, you know, because the missiles is a, is a plague as well, and then also the regular plagues. You know, they're not going to return back. They're, it's going to keep. It's going. The plague is going to keep continue to happen more and more and more and quicker. You see, until th this place is uh hit with nukes. It says the fire is kindled and should not be put out. You know, because the Lord said, hey, He come to send the fire upon the earth. You know, and what will He if uh it already be kindled? Because there's already going to be things popping off. It says, till it consumed the foundations of the earth. Like as an arrow which is shot off, uh, Salak, which is shot of a mighty archer re returneth not backward. Even so, the plagues that shall not be sent upon earth shall not return again. It says, "Woe is me! Is woe is me? Who will deliver me in those days?" Which this is going into Ezra, you know, because he'll be back in these times right now. It says the beginning of sorrows and great mournings, the beginnings of famine and great death, the beginning of wars, and the power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? All right. So pretty much we're seeing the beginnings of wars, you know, wars going into different uh, disputes, you know, strifes, quarrels, you know, those go uh, even um, even uh, 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 shows of forces or, or a show a show of force. You see, because I'm gonna get that definition again for uh, for war. It says a dispute. All right. This is a, a dispute, you know, a, a single encounter. All right. This is an encounter. You see. It's on a small level, but it's an encounter. Let's get that that term. It says a show of force is a military operation intended to warn, such as a warning shot, or to intimidate an opponent by showcasing a capability or will to act if one is provoked. Shows of force may also be executed by police forces and other non-military groups. 
the function of it is shows shows of force have historically been undertaken mostly by a military actor unwilling to engage in all out hostilities, but fearing to lose face or to appear weak. You see, and that, I mean, this chiefly goes into America, Babylon, and Great. You see, because they back they back Poland. You see, you know, so they pretty much doing the same thing America would do. You know, it says they fearing to lose face because they don't really want to. They don't really want to go all out. You know, they just they just they don't want to look weak. It says by performing a carefully calculated prov provocation, the opponent has shown that violent confrontation remains an option and there will be no backing off of the principle that the show of forces to defend. You know, so they more so defend and fighting off the back, the back foot, if you will. It says shows of force may be actual military operations, but in the time in times of official peace, they may also be limited to military exercises, you know. So, I mean, it's already prophesied that America, Babylon, the Great is going to fall, you know, and those that's attached to that uh, particular society, they're they going to fall as well, you know. But um, again, they fighting off the back foot, you know, and again, the, the victor, not the victory, the uh, the the winner of the battle, you know, is already decided or the loser of the battle is already decided. You see America, Babylon, the Great is going to go down. So fighting off their back foot, you know, they saying they, they defending, but. They got a weak defense, you see. Continuing on, it says shows of force also work on a smaller scale. Military forces on a tactical level using mock attacks to deter potential opponents, especially when a real attack on suspected but unconfirmed enemies might harm civilians. As an example, most air attacks during Operation Enduring Freedom and Operation Iraqi Freedom have been simple shows of force with the jet aircraft dropping flares only while making loud Low-level passes. One recent 12-month report of for Afghanistan noted 18,019 uh, 18, strike uh, so sorties by U.S. military aircraft with weapons using used for only uh, 3,330 of the missions. You see, so again, it's going just going into a show of force. Continuing on. It says, behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent in scorters for amendment. You see, pretty much uh, sent for change, you know, for two thirds of change, you see, but they're not going to change. As we get in verse 20, it says, but for all these things, they should not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges." You see, so as plagues are like, uh, you know, famine, extreme heat, you know, inflation, you know, but Jake is still comfortable. You know, he doesn't want to change from uh, loving the ways of his oppressor. It says, Behold, victuals shall be so good cheap upon earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case. And even then shall evils grow upon the world, sword, or upon the earth, sword, all right, which is a killing instrument, famine, and great confusion. No one knows what's going on but the prophets, you see. Everybody else is just confused about what's going on. It says, For many of them shall, it says, For many of them that dwell upon earth shall perish of famine, and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy them. All right, so a lot of people are going to die from this famine. All right, it's going to be extreme hunger going into dearth. It says, and it says, uh, and the other that escaped the hunger shall the sword destroy. All right, a lot of people can get, get, you know, uh, uh, killed by these, um, you know, Gurkha troops. All right, and the nukes. It says, and the dead shall be cast out as dung, and there shall be no man to comfort them, for the earth shall be wasted, and the city shall be cast down. There shall be no man left to till the earth and to sow it. The trees shall give fruit, and who shall gather them? The grapes shall ripen, and who shall tread them? For all places shall be desolate of men. All right. Verse 27. So that one man shall desire to see another and to hear his voice. For of a city there shall be ten left, and two of the field which shall hide themselves in the thick groves and the class of the rocks. As in orchards of olives, upon every tree there are left three or four olives. Or as a when a vineyard is gathered, there are left some clusters of them that diligently seek through the vineyard. Even so, in those days, there shall be three or four left by them that search their houses with the sword. And the earth shall be laid waste, and the fields thereof shall wax old. And her ways and all her path, paths shall grow full of thorns, because no man shall travel there through. You know, pretty much, because like, it's not going to be, it's not going to be, um... Uh, how everybody's like traveling and stuff like that. 
you know, summertime, you know, people are going out on vacation, stuff like that. It's not going to be uh, like that. You know, travel is going to be uh, limited. It says that the virgin shall mourn having no bridegrooms. The women shall mourn having no husbands. Their daughters shall mourn having no helpers. In the wars shall their bridegrooms be destroyed and their husbands shall perish of famine. See, so it's going to be a shortage of men. All right, well, pretty much the point that I want to get was it says in the wars because everybody is doing a show of force right now, but they're, they're uh, right now, it ain't necessarily they they about to go on attack. They just they just showing, but it's not just gonna stay. All right, uh, stay where you just bluffing, bluffing, bluffing. You throwing feints, you know, you you're throwing a fake. No, it's gonna actually um, turn into all out war. You see, I'm actually I'm gonna get that. This is Isaiah Yeshaya chapter nine, chapter nine and verse verse five. It says, for every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. You see, when you think about movies like the 300, you know, a lot of screaming, you know, confused noise, you know, grunting, stuff like that. It says garments rolled in blood. It says, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. And that's pretty much what's going to happen. You know, this one's going to be with burning and fuel of fire. You see, because the Lord is uh, going to use them nukes or the ICBMs, you know. And this place is going to be destroyed. America, Babylon, and Great, and then the, the various different other countries um, that's going to be destroyed, you see, because war is coming. So, I don't want to say, Lord's will, that was a beautiful, beautiful edification through the Spirit. Why I don't want to say, Lord's will, you all have a good day. Hey, shalom, shalom, shalom.